you asked me for more technical videos that showcase real life data workflows. So here it goes. Today, I'll show you how to upload data in BigQuery so you get a taste of what Google Cloud feels like. For those of you who are new here, my name is Mo Chen, and I've been working as a data and analytics manager in the financial services industry for years now. And with this said, let's get started. Today, we're using BigQuery Sandbox, which will allow us to use Google Cloud at zero cost. So when you search for BigQuery Sandbox on Google, you click the first link, you will have access to the Google Cloud environment. BigQuery Sandbox is just a way for you to get free access to Google's cloud system. So as you can see here, I already created a Nespresso data project, but I'm going to create this one from scratch to show you the steps. So what you have to do here is click this button and then you can select create new new project. Let's name this project the Nespresso project. You can see here that this is going to be the project ID. The project ID cannot be changed. So don't forget that when you are creating its name. And the project ID is basically how you're going to refer to this entire project when you want to query something. I'll show you this hierarchy method when we query our tables. But for now, we have our project ID and we have our project name. Let's click create. It's going to start running in the background, as you can see here on the notifications tab. And then as soon as it's ready, you can select the Nespresso project and the entire environment is going to change to that specific project. We're now inside of our project. As you can see, this project has a lot of folders, but I just want you to focus on these three dots. You click these and choose create dataset. The dataset ID is the level below the project. To better explain this concept, let me draw something here. You will have your project and then let's um, make it a little bit smaller. And uh, after you will have your dataset or group of datasets, below the datasets, you will have your data tables. So below this, there are your tables. So this one will be table one. table two and table three. And on this side, you will have the same thing. Let me just repeat the same thing for this side. So we're going to have these three data tables as well. And there it is. Now, every time you want to write an SQL query, you will select a specific column. Let's choose date. And then we're going to select date from the project.dataset1, which is going to be this one dot uh, table one. That's the way to query the data that you want. And of course, you can use an alias for this, but I just want to make sure you understand this part. The dataset ID for this one is going to be the Nespresso dataset project, and we're going to select create a dataset. You don't have to change anything here, and now you have your dataset ready. So now let's create the tables. So the first table we're going to create is the orders table, the facts table. Okay, now that we have the file, let's look at the destination. Remember this, project, dataset, table. And you can see here, project, dataset, and the table we want for this is the orders table. We're now going to let BigQuery auto detect the schema because with CSV files, you usually have the column names at the top and then you have all of the records below and BigQuery usually understands that very well. So let's go and create our table to see if everything goes as planned. And now we can check out our table. So when you click on the table, you'll have a bunch of things. You'll have the schema, the details, the preview, you can explore the different parts of the table, just one column if you want. But the most important thing that I want you to see here is that you can analyze your data right here. So you can see your column, the data types, and you can also preview how your data is formatted. For example, here we can see that we have 37,000 rows in this table. Now I'm going to repeat the process for all the other tables.
Okay, so now I have uploaded two more tables and we'll upload the last one. Sometimes, for some reason, Google won't be able to upload your files the way you want it. And we'll face one of these situations uh, right here. Let's create our final table, which is going to be the customer's dimension table. I'm just going to name it and click the auto detect right here. Let's see what happens. Now check this out. When I click on the customer's dimension, something feels wrong. Our headers were swapped by other names, string fields zero, string field one, string field two, and string field three. The first thing you have to do in these cases is not panic. It's time to try and understand why it made a mistake and try to find a quick way to fix it. Let's look at the preview pane and we can see that we have the customer ID, the age group, the gender, and the loyalty tier right here. Let's see if we can find this information in this table. Because there are only 152 records, let's see if we can find something here that tells us where this information might be. Ah, here's the problem. Instead of using the first row as headers, it placed headers in the last row. There are a lot of ways to fix this. What we're going to do here is we're going to delete the table and um, we're going to use a different way to name the columns. Let's delete this table and let's upload it again. I'll be right back. Now that I have the customer's dimension table uploaded again, I'm going to define the schema myself. So the first field, like we saw, is the customer ID. The second field is uh, age group. And this field, even though is made up of a series of numbers, we want to treat it as a string and not as an integer or float. The third field is gender and then loyalty tier. Okay, so now that we have created the schema, let's select create table and see what happens. Perfect. Now it seems that we have our data and we have the preview as well, like we wanted. So everything is set up now and we can move on to the next stage, which is the data cleaning part.